Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we will continue our discussion with satellite communications and so far we have discussed some basic concepts related to orbital mechanics, the various forces acting on satellite, Kepler's laws of planetary motion about uh, the various orbital parameters uh, such as the ascending and descending nodes about uh, semi-major, semi-minor axis, apogee, perigee. Uh, eccentricity all of that so in this video we are going to discuss about uh, some other uh, basic uh, not basic but uh, uh, orbital parameters which come into play these events uh, in relation to satellite communications so in this video we are going to discuss about uh, uh, two events two such events which are related to the movement of the earth around sun okay the rotation of earth about its own axis and the movement of earth around the sun in its own orbit so these two events are related to that and these events also affect the communication between earth and the satellite which is uh, orbiting around the planet so understand earth is orbiting around sun we have a satellite which is orbiting around earth so the movement the position of sun and earth okay in relation to each other is also going to have an impact on the communication between the earth and satellite so these two events are related to that so we must understand this so we are going to discuss about equinox and solstice okay so before that we must have one thing clear that the earth it rotates about its own axis and also around the sun so these two events will be related to that okay so just have this thing in mind visualize this first and then we'll have our discussion okay earth rotates about its own axis and also around the sun okay so few points are very much important to discuss beforehand to understand equinox and solstice so first is subsolar point so the subsolar point is uh, we can say that uh, it is a point of contact of the line joining the center of the earth with the center of the sun okay so the line joining the center of the earth and the center of the sun the point of contact of that line with earth that is called as the sub solar point so in this case when earth and sun are in this position the sub solar point is here when earth and sun are in this position at an angle the sub solar point is here so here is the point of contact of this line joining the center of the earth and the center of the sun so in simple words you can understand that subsolar point is the point of contact of the line with the surface of the earth that joins the center of the earth and the center of the sun so basically subsolar point uh, is basically used to uh, uh, specify the location of a planet in this case earth at some point of a year when it comes directly under the sun okay or uh, when the sunlight actually hits at this point perpendicularly okay at this point sunlight hits the earth's surface perpendicularly in this case also also in this case it hits the surface perpendicularly so subsolar point it varies depending on position of the earth with respect to sun as it moves around the sun okay so when we discuss sub solar point there is another important parameter which is the solar declination angle so solar declination angle is the angle between the equatorial line okay the equatorial line which divides the earth into two equal halves the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere and the line joining the center of the earth and the center of the sun the same uh, the subsolar point line okay so solar declination angle is the angle between the equatorial line and the line joining 
the center of the earth and the center of the sun that is the solar declination angle so solar declination angle it it will vary obviously it will vary because as earth is moving around the sun its position with respect to sun will change and the solar declination angle will also change okay uh, it also arises because of the tilt of uh, the earth about its own axis and also because of the movement of the earth around the sun so actually the solar declination angle it follows a sinusoidal variation okay uh, throughout the year and it completes one cycle of this sinusoidal variation in one year that is 365 days and it is represented as uh, the solar declination angle is 23.5 sin 2 pi t by t okay this angle okay this solar declination angle it follows this sinusoidal variation where t is 365 days almost one year so in some in somewhere you will find it is written as 23.4 somewhere you will find 23.45 or 23.5 okay so it is uh, it can be represented as this the sinusoidal variation so this is the maximum solar declination angle and in another case you will have this solar declination angle in the negative direction okay this and this okay so equinox and solstice are related to uh, subsolar point and solar declination angle we will understand them using these two terms that's why these two term uh, terms are very important solar declination angle the angle between the equatorial line and the line joining the center of the earth and the sun and subsolar point which is the point of contact of the line joining the center of the earth and the center of the sun with the earth's surface the point of contact of that line okay so now coming to the main part which is what is equinox and what is solstice so equinox is that event or that position of the earth with respect to the sun where the subsolar point it passes through the equator this position okay this position where the point of contact of this line we can say the subsolar point line joining the center of the sun with the center of the earth it's exactly passing through the equator no inclination no angle so you can also say that the equinox is that position where the solar declination angle is zero solar declination angle is zero these points this this point where it is zero this point this point okay where it is zero solar declination angle is zero so two such times come when uh, equinox happens which is the vernal or spring equinox which happens around 20 to 21 march and autumnal equinox around 22 to 23 september so these two equinoxes are separated by 6 months okay 6 months apart they are spaced so equinoxes are the, the times when both the northern and the southern hemisphere they experience almost same amount of day and night time okay they experience that okay equinox now next is solstice so you understand about equinox at any point if you don't understand please rewind the video and please watch it again because it is very important okay now is solstice so solstices are the times when the solar declination angle is at its maximum in both the positive and the negative direction that is 23.5 degrees so two such occurrences happen one Uh, is around 20 to 21 june which is called a summer solstice and the other is around 21 to 22 december called as winter solstice also they are spaced 6 months apart so these two points okay the solstice 23.5 degree positive direction and this is 23.5 degree in the negative direction positive and negative means this 
this is the maximum solar declination angle in the positive direction the summer solstice where the solar declination angle is maximum in the positive direction and this is the winter solstice where the solar declination angle is the maximum in the negative direction downwards so summer solstice and winter solstice so you can also uh, understand the solar declination angle in terms of this we know that the earth it is uh, it rotates about its own axis which is slightly tilted and also it moves around the sun so the amount uh, the uh, portion of the earth that faces the sun it receives sunlight and uh, we know it, uh, it is day daytime and the opposite the portion or the face of the earth which is opposite to sun it experiences night so this angle between the the two halves which receive day and night time and the axis okay the tilt the tilted axis the angle between these two is also the solar declination angle it also varies sinusoidally so you can understand solar declination angle in this way this angle and also this is the same as the angle between the tilted axis and the two halves okay which are experiencing day and night time in terms of which is facing the sun and it is it is uh, uh, having the sunlight and the uh, op the other side which is experiencing night time okay so this angle also varies because of the movement of the earth around the sun and also the rotation of the earth about its axis so four events are very important summer solstice winter solstice vernal equinox and autumnal equinox vernal equinox or spring equinox so these two solstices they are spaced 6 months apart these two equinoxes they are also spaced 6 months apart and these two events affect the communication between the earth and the satellite which is orbiting around earth the effect uh, will come to you know that we'll discuss that how it affects later on when we'll discuss the related concepts so now you just understand the basic concepts related to equinox and solstice okay so here two important parameters that come into play are the subsolar point okay the point of impact of the line joining the sun center and the earth center at the point of contact at the surface and the solar declination angle which is the angle between the equatorial line and the line joining the sun and the earth's center okay so equinox and solstice are explained in terms of subsolar point and solar declination angle so equinox are those where solar declination angle is zero and solstices are the events where the solar declination angle is maximum in the upward and downward direction okay So I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel Engineering Tutorial for more such videos related to engineering science and technology have a great day thank you very much